In this SketchUp tutorial, I want to cover the basics of how you can go about creating floors and walls. And we're going to do that by creating a very simple floor plan for a very you know, basic house. What I want to do is start with the you know, very simple footprint. So I'm just going to grab a rectangle. Uh, you could use you know, any of these drawing tools out of your large tool set, but the rectangle will do the job. And what I'm going to do is actually snap to this origin point and then pull my mouse out. When I do that, the value control box in the lower right hand corner changes from saying just measurement, which is very generic, to dim dimensions because I'm not just putting in one measurement, I'm actually putting in two because it's a rectangle. So we have the X axis dimension and then the Y really is what we have going on. And I think I'll just do 40 feet comma 40 feet and then enter. So I just have a large flat square right now is really all I have. Once I have that, what I want to do is a push-pull to give it a thickness. I'm going to bring that into 3D. So I could bring that up and I'll just keep things really simple. So I'll say 6 inches. So now we have a large slab for our floor basically. Once I have something like this, if I've decided that you know I wanted to change the shape a little bit, let's say I wanted to put um, another area over here for maybe you know a garage or um, another room or something, I don't have to go back and change that. I can actually work with what I have. What I can do is perhaps grab my line tool out of the large tool set, and if I just orbit around, I could actually draw right on this very narrow face. So maybe I'll keep it simple and just divide this edge up into two separate faces. Once I've done that, I can use the push-pull tool again, grab, oops, grab this face and pull it out. And you'll see that I'm able to change my shape very, very easily. So I could pull this out and say, you know, perhaps 20 feet. And now we have you know, a more unique shape, so we can very easily divide up faces and use the push-pull to manipulate it as we go. You don't have to have the entire profile drawn to begin with, although you can certainly work that way as well. Once I have this, we can use a quick little technique to bring up some walls. What I'm going to do is grab offset out of the large tool set. And when I do that, when I come in and hover over this face and then click, you'll see it actually offsets my entire profile here. So even if this was very complicated, it would mimic that shape proportionally all the way around. Once I have that, I could say, well, how about six inches? So I have a nice offset of that shape all the way around. And if I zoom in a little bit, you'll see that if I grab my push-pull tool and hover, now I have the ability to select either this interior part, which is very large, it's the floor, or this small narrow band that's basically framing my floor plan. What I can do now is actually click on that new narrow wall portion and pull up. But if I just click and pull, what happens is I have sort of a fused together look. There's no division on the exterior between the floor and the walls. That might work in some applications, but that's maybe not what I'm going for right now. So all I have to do is hit the control key. When you hit the control key, your push-pull cursor gets a plus sign next to it. Then when you pull up, you'll see that now we have that line at the bottom of the wall. So there's a division between the floor and the wall. If I hit the control key again, it will get rid of that so you can see the difference between um, not having a separation and now having a separation, which is generally probably what you're gonna want. So I'm going to pull my mouse up and I'll type in 12 feet, enter. And now I've created the exterior of my building and divide it out that floor. Okay, so that's simple enough. Now, if we wanted to go in and start creating some interior walls, uh, there's different ways that we could go about doing that. But a really nice thing to do is actually use your tape measure tool, measure those off, and then we'll just use the surfaces we've already created to um, create new three-dimensional uh, walls. 
So I'm going to come over and grab my tape measure tool out of the large tool set. And what I'm going to do is come to what I'm just going to describe as the front of my house. So this will be the front. And I'm going to spin around so I can get inside of there. And we'll just divide the front of this up a little bit. What the tape measure tool does is grabs a, a edge, basically, and if I click on this one and pull out, it will create a guideline that's parallel to that surface. So if I click on that corner and then pull my mouse out this direction, I could type in a measurement and I'll have a guideline that distance away. So perhaps here I'll say 15 feet, enter, and I have a guideline that's 15 feet away from that wall. I can then click on the guideline if I want to and pull another one out either direction. Maybe I'll go back that way and say six inches and now I have a guideline that's six inches away from the original one. So I'll do that again on this side. So I'll just come out perhaps 15 feet again and then I'll come back this direction six inches. So it's very, very easy to create guidelines. Once we have those, we can then come in with either lines or rectangles, whatever we'd like to use, and divide that up and use the push-pull tool. So I could use, for example, the line tool, and then I can actually snap to the intersection of the lines, or edges really, and the guides. So I can use the line tool, or I could also use the rectangle tool. Either would work. And once I actually have the lines in there, I can then use push-pull, and I can pull these out. So maybe for right now, I will pull it out. Well, actually, I could pull it out to match this edge. So if I want this wall to be the same distance as it is to this jut out, when I'm pulling that out, I can actually just line that up. I can do the same thing over here. And now those are all the same length. If I decide I want to change that later, I can certainly just click on an edge and make it longer or shorter. I'll just hit escape because it's not what I want to do. So now we have a couple of guidelines hanging out there that you can see are really long. They basically go in infinite space. It's not not always so great. So I can just use my eraser and drag across and erase those guidelines. And now maybe I want to create some connection here. I don't just want these freestanding walls. All right, so I'll just use another tape measure, perhaps off of this corner, six inches. Grab my line to connect. Use my push-pull, grab that out, and now I have a connected room over here, and I can do the same thing on this wall. Draw my line, use the push-pull, and create that room. Once you've done that, you'll see that you do get a little bit of, uh, you know, extra line work in here. Like I have an extra line here I might not really like, and that will happen here or there. You can just simply erase those. You can either use the eraser or hit the delete key. Either will work. Okay, so we have a couple of rooms in the front, and that's looking pretty good. Okay, but perhaps I want to... Uh, you know, divide this room off or something like that. Well, I can certainly just use the uh, existing wall here. I can simply snap and come out and then come straight down. There we go. that line and come straight down and if you're having a hard time finding that vertical axis don't forget you can hit the up or down arrow on your keypad there we go and then we can use the push pull 
So pull that into three dimensions. And then we can use our eraser. Just type an E on your keyboard to get rid of those extra lines. They're not really hurting anything at this point. It's just a little sloppy, so it looks better uh, if we get rid of those. So that's looking pretty good. So that's really all there is to it in terms of putting walls into your space. So now we have a basic floor and some walls defining our house. I'll just erase these extra guidelines. And that's looking pretty good. Now, something that's important to do at this point, if you're going to start putting in uh, furniture or doors or windows and other types of components and things like that, it's important to remember that the way SketchUp works is that this will ultimately get sticky. So if you put something else in here, they're all going to want to join together. So if you remember, if you click on any surface that will highlight, if I double click on it, it will get the face and all the edges. And if I triple click, you'll see it selects the whole thing. So all of these are connected, therefore they're all um, kind of fused together. What we want to do is create a group for our floors and our walls so that when we put other elements in here, it doesn't have that sticky effect so we can you know, easily manipulate things and move them around. So with this all selected, I'm going to right click and say make group. When I do that, the uh, necessity of triple clicking goes away. If I just click on this, you'll see that the group is activated. And if I want to go in and make changes to it, I simply double click and that allows me to get in and edit the group. I can click outside of it to get out of that. I can also right click on it and say edit group. So then I could go in and make whatever changes I want to um, and then I can click outside of it to get out. So it's an important step to take before you start adding doors and windows and things like that, or you're going to end up with a bit of a mess. So that's the basics of doing walls and floors.